started crying on the stand. White News reporter Zach Oliveri was in the courtroom. And Zach, what did that first responder see when she first walked into the home? Lois, Robin Jackson noticed a, a baby, a very small baby, 18-month-old Ezra, lying on a bed, not breathing. She did not According to the report, when Lee County emergency medics arrived at the home just before 8 a.m., Sheila met them at the door and handed the child to paramedics. Shortly after their arrival and examination, the child was pronounced dead at the scene. Hey y'all, now that we are all caught up, back to my bullshit. Um, so yeah, I still find it interesting that, you know, the paramedic story changed over a year and a half. I don't think that means she's not a murderer, but I do find that interesting. The 911 call she made after her son died from starvation. She seems legitimately heartbroken in the recording and Sheila at the hearing. Sheila is accused of neglecting her child and starving him to death. If found guilty, she could get life in prison. White News reporter Zach Oliveri joins us in the studio. Zach, the jury heard opening statements today. What did each side say to them? Lois, this he told the jury how their daughter Lily also suffered from malnutrition as a child, was diagnosed with jaundice, and failure to thrive. Chen said he would sneak fish and chicken to Lily when Sheila wasn't around. She was really like strong in her decisions on how she wants certain things to be done, including raising Lily. Um, this is a bad thing? Yes. I mean, sh failure to thrive, I mean, that's bad. <laughs> and uh, doctor uh, test results stating that she was lacking in all these things, that's bad. During my reporting. All right, so let's look into all these things that Lily was diagnosed with. Jaundice, yellow skin caused by the buildup of bilirubin in the blood. Jaundice may occur if the liver can't efficiently process red blood cells as they break down. It's normal in healthy newborns and usually clears on its own. At other ages, it may signal infection or liver disease. Common, more than 200,000 U.S. cases per year. So this is a study from NCBI on um, vegans and jaundice. Implications for practice. Nutritional vitamin B12 deficiency is seen almost exclusively in vegans and can manifest with a wide range of hematologic and neurologic symptoms and signs. Vitamin B12 deficiency can also present with isolated reoccurring episodes of jaundice. All patients presenting with unexplained indirect hyperbilirubinemia should be screened for vitamin B12 deficiency, especially when associated with other risk factors for the same. Background, asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic Indirect hyperbilirubinemia can occur in a variety of disorders, including hyomolytic anemias, such as hereditary spherocytosis and elliptocytosis, and Gilbert syndrome. Therefore, evaluation for hypobilirubinemia must include a careful search for evidence of hyomolysis, such as elevated serum lactate dehydronase LDH, reticulocytosis, and undetectable serum haptoglobin levels. In addition, such patients often exhibit clinically fi clinical findings of pallor and splenomegaly, although these signs can be subtle or altogether absent in cases of mild hemolysis with brisk compensatory reticulocytosis. Vitamin B12 deficiency is unique in that it represents an acquired and readily correctable cause for hyomolysis. The mechanism of hyomolysis is this condition in this condition, sorry, is the phenomenon of ineffective erythropoiesis wherein immature erythrocytes are lysed within the bone marrow itself, resulting in the Ineffective erythropoiesis, wherein immature erythrocytes are lysed within the bone marrow itself, 
resulting in the release of excess quantities of biliverdin, which is ultimately converted to indirect bilirubin. The resulting clinical picture may be indistinguishable from other forms of hyomolytic anemia. Hematological parameters, including a high mean corpuscular volume, MCV, and a macrocytic peripheral blood picture are useful red flags suggesting underlying B12 deficiency in such cases. The absence of reticulocytosis is also a useful marker to distinguish vitamin B12 deficiency, hypoproliferative state, from true hemolysis hemolytic anemias. Low serum B12 in association with these features confirms a diagnosis of vitamin B12 deficiency. Gilbert syndrome is another differential diagnosis of isolated asymptomatic hyperbilirubinemia and is diagnosed by estimations of hyperbilirubinemia after suppression with phenobarbitone and after caloric restriction and lipid Restriction, as was performed for our patient, genetic testing for Gilbert syndrome is also available. All right, on to the next one. Failure to thrive. This is from Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. What can cause failure to thrive? Different things can cause failure to thrive, including not enough calories provided, the child eats too little, health problems involving the digestive system, food intolerance, an ongoing medical condition, infections, metabolic disorders. What is failure to thrive? When growing kids don't gain weight as they should, it is called failure to thrive. Failure to thrive is not a disease or disorder itself. Rather, it's a sign that a child is undernourished. In general, kids who fail to thrive are not getting enough calories to grow and gain weight in a healthy way. When kids can't gain weight, they also often may not grow as tall as they should. Kids need to get enough calories to learn and develop well. So kids with failure to thrive might start to walk and talk later than other kids and can have trouble learning in school. What causes failure to thrive? Different things can cause failure to thrive, including not enough calories provided. Sometimes a parent or caregiver measures or mixes formula incorrectly so an infant doesn't get enough calories. Problems with breastfeeding or starting solids also can cause failure to thrive. Some families have trouble affording enough food for their children, and sometimes parents miss their children's hunger cues. The child eats too little. Some children have trouble eating enough food. This might be due to a developmental delay, being a very picky eater, a medical condition that affects swallowing, like cerebral palsy or a cleft palate, or a condition like autism in which kids don't like eating foods with some textures or tastes. Health problems involving the digestive system. Problems with the digestive system can prevent a child from gaining weight. Conditions like gastroesophageal reflux, GER, chronic diarrhea, cystic fibrosis, chronic liver disease, and celiac disease can make it harder for kids to absorb enough nutrients and calories to gain weight. Food intolerance. A food intolerance means the body is sensitive to some foods. For example, milk protein intolerance means the body can't absorb foods such as yogurt and cheese, which could lead to failure to thrive. An ongoing medical condition. Kids with conditions involving the heart, lungs, or endocrine system might need more calories than other kids. It can be hard for some to eat enough. Infections. The body can use up a lot of calories as it fights an infection and kids who don't feel well may eat less than usual. Metabolic disorders. These are health conditions that make it hard for the body to break down, process, or take energy from food. They also can cause a child to eat poorly or vomit. Sometimes a mix of things leads to failure to thrive. 
For instance, if a baby has severe GER and is reluctant to eat, feeding times can be stressful. The baby may be upset and frustrated, and the caregiver might not be able to get the baby to eat enough. Other times, doctors aren't exactly sure what causes failure to thrive. How is failure to thrive diagnosed? Many babies and kids go through brief periods when they don't gain as much weight as expected. But if a child continues to not gain enough weight or loses weight, doctors try to find out why. They'll ask for a child's health history, including a feeding history. This helps them see if underfeeding, household stresses, or feeding problems might be causing the problem. A dietitian or other healthcare professional also may track the calories in a child's diet to make sure the child is getting enough. Doctors measure a child's weight, length, and head circumference at each well child checkup and put the result on a growth chart. Children may have failure to thrive if they weigh less than most kids their age or aren't gaining weight as quickly as they should. How is failure to thrive treated? Treating kids who fail to thrive involves making sure they get the calories they need to grow. The care team also will address any causes for poor weight gain they find. A child's care team may include a primary care doctor, a registered dietitian, occupational therapists to help with sensory or coordination problems, speech therapists to help with any sucking or swallowing problems, a social worker if a family has trouble getting enough food, psychologists and other mental health professionals for any behavioral issues, specialists such as a cardiologist, neurologist, or gastroenterologist to treat health conditions that could affect a child's weight. Usually, kids who have failure to thrive can be treated at home. They'll also have regular doctor visits to check on weight gain. Doctors often recommend a high calorie, high calorie foods and for babies, a high calorie formula. Doctors also might recommend spacing out meals to make sure children are hungry, avoiding empty calories like juices and candies, offering foods of certain textures if sensory issues are a problem, other strategies depending on what's causing the failure to thrive. Weight gain takes time, so it might be several months before a child is back in the normal range. Some children with failure to thrive might need care in a hospital. They'll be fed and watched around the clock for several days or longer until they gain some weight. After leaving the hospital, the child will continue treatment at home. So I have a theory that vegan children and fruitarian children are at higher risk for failure to thrive due to their limited diet and, you know, them not wanting to eat it. Kids like a variety of food. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a possibility or do you think that, you know, failure to thrive happens just as equally among people who have a traditional diet and people who have a fruitarian or vegan diet. Let me know. All right, guys, um, I will be posting another video on Wednesday. That will be when the jury is deliberating. I don't think it will take long, so we will probably have a verdict then, but who knows? Maybe we won't. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, please sub, please share. Please thank you. Bye.